What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the True Mets Talk podcast. Today, we're talking Juan Soto from a New York Mets perspective. I'll give the latest updates on what's been said about Juan Soto so far from the MLB beat reporters. But before we get into that, make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, bottom right hand corner, hover over the icon, hit that subscribe button for more Mets content. And let me know in the comments section whether you would like to see the Mets trade for Juan Soto or not, given the roster needs of this team. I want to know what you have to think as fellow Mets fans. You know where to find me. All my handles are at CPNY Sports, whether it's here on YouTube or on X or Instagram. Follow me for more podcast updates. As always, thank you for the support, and let's get into some Mets baseball talk. All right, so I wanted to make this video because this has been a hot debate on my Twitter timeline amongst Mets fans, whether or not the Mets should make the investment to give up a haul of prospects for the services of Juan Soto, given that he is a free, free agent, excuse me, in 2025, and with potentially him wanting north of $400 million. My immediate answer is yes. You make an inquiry to the San Diego Padres all day long if you're David Stearns, at least at face value, to see if, one, you have what it takes to acquire Juan Soto, and two, to gauge the market of what other teams are offering. Now, from the reports of it, there's a mixed bag of reports right now. Some reporters are saying the Mets and Yankees are heavily in on Juan Soto. Whereas the other reporters, such as J.P. Morosi on MLB Network, are saying the Padres are unwilling and unlikely to trade Juan Soto. Nobody knows what the San Diego Padres situation is money-wise. They have a lot of money tied up to Machado, Tatis, Musgrove, and Darvish. And you could even potentially see one of those top pitchers that they're paying top dollar for come in with Juan Soto in a trade package to get money off of their books if they're financially in trouble. Again, nobody knows. Right now, in this video, I'm strictly speaking on, I'm going to caveat this because it's important, I'm strictly speaking on acquiring Juan Soto by himself. Because when you talk about other pitchers being involved in the deal, like a Darvish or Musgrove, it's a mixed bag in terms of making the payrolls work. Let's let's call it at that. And that's strictly a GM's job to do to crunch the numbers. Now, Juan Soto hit about 270 last year, give or take, hit 35 home runs, looked like the old Juan Soto. Everyone knows that he struggled in 2022, um, especially when he came over to the San Diego Padres at first, had an abysmal time over there. And I firmly believe that Juan Soto would rather play on the East Coast. Um, I I firmly believe that. That's speculation, but I firmly believe that. Now, if you're the San Diego Padres, a lot of people are saying, well, they're not going to deal Juan Soto. They're going to wait until the deadline until they deal him to see if they're in contention or not in 2024. If you're the Padres and you wait to do that, and if you're not in contention, you're losing half the value in terms of the haul that you're going to get for Juan Soto as opposed to if you were to trade him during these 2023 winter meetings. That is not a smart decision. And I firmly believe the Padres are still a playoff team if they don't have Juan Soto. The core that they have without Juan Soto in the picture, as well as the prospect haul or MLB-ready talent haul that they're going to get, in a Juan Soto, in a potential Juan Soto deal, still makes them a playoff team. So that's not the issue. If they're still trying to win and compete and not tear it all down, that's not the issue. Now, if you're a team like the New York Mets and you're trying to trade for Juan Soto, not only you have to ask what a trade package is, looks like for him and what gets it done, which I'll give my hypothetical trade package here in a second, but also... Can you get a deal done with him in an extension before he hits free agency in 2025? Now, if you're the New York Mets, 
You understand who your direct competitor is for Juan Soto. It's the New York Yankees. It's not known how far the Yankees are willing to go in terms of giving up their top-level prospects for Juan Soto. It's been reported already that the Yankees are heavily engaged in talks. The Padres and Yankees are going back and forth on names already, so it's in those stages of the talks. How true that is, I don't know. I'm reiterating what I'm seeing from these MLB beat reporters, and there's plenty of them out there covering the story. Talk about Bob Nightingale, John Heyman, J.P. Morosi, Hector Gomez, et cetera, all those guys, even Andy Martino. Um, but the Padres, obviously, in initial talks, are going to be asking for the services of Dominguez, Volpe, Schmidt, et cetera, from the Yankees. Do we really think the Yankees are going to go that far and be willing to part ways with those guys in the Soto deal? Because if they don't, then I don't see how they're getting Juan Soto in the first place. And at that point, Juan Soto is there for the taking if, you, if you're the New York Mets. That's why I've been saying this, and I put out a tweet yesterday, and it get, got some, uh, some backlash. Not backlash, but some differences in opinion. I firmly believe the Mets hold all the power in the Juan Soto trade market. They have all the pieces that it takes. They have the best firepower in the farm system to make a trade. Now, the, the takes that I'm hearing is that the Padres are going to want MLB-ready pitching. They want pitching, 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 pitching. Because outside of Musgrove and Darvish, obviously Snell is probably leaving and they don't have much outside of those top two. They have two... Top 100 MLB pitching prospects, starting pitchers on the way. And the Mets have pitching to offer. Now, it's probably not as good as the Yankees pitching, but when you add other names in there in terms of a hitting perspective, I believe the Mets have the best offer on the table if they choose to make that offer to the San Diego Padres. And on the flip side, the San Diego Padres don't hold as much leverage as you think in this deal, in a potential deal, that is. They understand that other front offices understand that they only have a one-year window negotiating period to lock Juan Soto up before he hits 2025 free agency. And everyone knows who Juan Soto's agent is. It's Scott Boris. Now, the Mets are familiar with dealing with Scott Boris. So does that play a factor? You, you would have to think so. But listen, all I'm saying is that Juan Soto, generational bat. I understand that he doesn't provide you much in the field, doesn't have a great arm in the outfield, probably more of a DH for the next 10 years if you do go ahead and trade for him and then extend him. But you have a middle lineup at that point of Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso, and Juan Soto. What has Pete Alonso always lacked ever since he came up in the New York Mets organization to the MLB? Protection. It's been Jeff McNeil right behind him at times. It's been Starling Marte for the majority of 2022. And in 2023, it was Daniel Vogelback for most of the year. It's amazing what Pete Alonso has been able to do with that lack of protection in the lineup. We all thought it could have been Carlos Correa last offseason to add that protection. Didn't happen. The Mets have the chance now to add that protection for Pete with another power bat. A lefty, no less. Juan Soto. Now, like I said, I would understand if the Mets do their due diligence and just didn't come up and they came up a little short but at least force the Yankees' hand to outbid you. If you want to throw out maybe more of a low ball offer to see if you can get the Padres to bite and then force the Yankees' hand, why not do it? Because who are your direct competitors outside of the Yankees? I don't see the Giants being a player. The Padres aren't trading Juan Soto within a division. I would certainly hope not for their sake, at least. The Dodgers, probably not. I wouldn't see the Dodgers being a fit there. They got 
bigger plans in terms of the pitching market, et cetera. So you could say maybe the Dodgers, but I don't think Juan Soto, unless they come out of left field, because none of the reports so far have been naming the Dodgers as a potential player for Juan Soto that I've seen. The Braves, they're going to come out of left field with the money that they already have tied up to their young guys. And being as cheap that they are, try to lowball Juan Soto on extension, that's not happening. So really, outside of the two New York teams, who's competing for Juan Soto? Now, both of these teams, the Yankees and the Mets, Juan Soto alone is not going to make them MLB World Series contenders. These two teams have massive roster holes to fix, and the Mets included. So I'll talk about the Mets' perspective there. They need a DH. They need a left fielder. They potentially need a third baseman, depending on what happens with Brett Beatty and Ronnie Mauricio. And if you're comfortable with trotting them out there. And they need a lot of starting pitching help. Three rotation spots they need. So you're looking at a payroll for the Mets. As of right now, with all these roster holes, automatically the Mets have $240 million invested in this payroll as of today, as of when I'm recording this on November 29th. The Mets are going to be active. If you think for a second that payroll is not going to hit $300 million plus, you're sadly mistaken. It has to by default with how many roster holes they have. But if Steve Cohen is willing to go back up there in that luxury tax threshold, $350 million payroll, Adding Juan Soto is a must. You get Juan Soto, you get Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and you backfill the rotation with some cheaper options. That could potentially be a play. That could potentially be a play. Now, like I said, there's a lot of other things to take into account here. There's a lot of different scenarios. There's a lot of different trade packages. We don't know the full extent of how far the Yankees are willing to go. We don't even know if the Mets are actually truly in on him. All I'm saying in this podcast episode is that if you're David Stearns, you have to do your due diligence. Because with the lack of leverage the Padres have, with the uncertainty of how far the Yankees are willing to go, you could luck into getting a steal of a deal for Juan Soto. And then the challenge at that point becomes the race to extend him before he hits free agency. Listen, if you're the Mets and you want to chance Juan Soto getting to free agency in 2025, by all means, but I firmly believe if the Mets pass up a Juan Soto trade this offseason and a team like the Yankees swoops in with the lack of competition elsewhere for Juan Soto, he is not hitting the open market. The Yankees are getting that extension done. You won't see Juan Soto on the open market for another 10 to 12 years. I firmly believe that. That is a risky, risky, risky move if you're the New York Mets and you are interested in Juan Soto to wait to 2025 free agency. And that's been a popular take I've seen on Twitter thus far that, quite frankly, I'm not comfortable waiting until 20, uh, 2025. And the Mets' farm system is perfectly set up to make a deal like this happen and still be okay depth-wise for prospects that are scheduled to arrive in 2026, 2027, and beyond. That's the reason Billy Epler and Steve Cohen pulled the plug in 2023 at the trade deadline, to set themselves up for immediate success in the trade market, whether it be for Juan Soto, whether it be for Dylan Cease, whether it be for Corbin Burns, etc., this offseason and in 2025. So, like I said, a lot of different ways you can play it. We don't know the full extent of the Mets' plans. We don't know their philosophy of how they're going to approach this offseason, whether they're going to spend big still or not. That remains to be seen. But let's talk about a potential 
Juan Soto deal. This is hypothetical. I understand that this might not get it done still. This might not be enough for the Padres liking even, you know, especially with the the Yankees potentially being in. Excuse me. I'm a little under the weather. I apologize in making this. But I think this is the baseline offer that you have to make if you're the New York Mets and you're serious about acquiring Juan Soto. I think this is a baseline type offer that you have to make. And I'm not a prospect hugger. I'll go on record to say this. I am not in the business of hugging prospects, especially when the Mets farm system right now is set up in a way that you can let go of three to four top 10 prospects and still be okay depth-wise moving forward and also building through the draft. The Mets hired developmental personnel. They hired scouting personnel to, to sort of enhance that draft process that has been lacking for the Mets for numerous years, for decades. So here's my hypothetical Mets Juan Soto deal. This is a baseline. This is not a top offer, quote unquote, even though it seems like a lot. This is a baseline deal that you approach the Padres with and say, here's my offer. Let me know what your other offers are and we can go from there. But this is my offer to you. Luis Angel Acuna, number one in the Mets organization right now. Kevin Parada, who has the flexibility to play first base as well. And we all know the lack of production that the Padres are getting out of Jake Cronenworth with that bat at first base. 2023, he hit 229 with only 10 home runs. So don't tell me that the, the Padres won't be interested in Kevin Parada. Understand they have a top prospect catcher on the way already, but he can go and play first base if you need him to. That's number five. He's number five in the Mets organization. And then Mike Basel, MLB ready pitcher immediately is number nine in the Mets organization. And Blade Tidwell, who is probably more so 2025 ready, but could be ready maybe by the deadline of 2024 to make an appearance in the MLB is number 10 in the Mets organization. And I'm very high on Blade Tidwell. I understand some people might not be, but I am very high on Blade Tidwell. I, th I think Mike Basel is a little bit more of the underwhelming prospect, but he's more MLB ready. Luis Angel Acuna, number 38 in the entirety of MLB's top 100 prospects. And Kevin Parada is around 75, give or take, in the top 100 MLB prospects right now currently. So, like I said, this might seem a little underwhelming if the Padres would be asking for a guy like Drew Gilbert, who sits at number 53 in MLB's top 100 pipeline instead of Luis Angel Acuna because their infield's a little crowded. So be it. You can swing that deal. And if they're okay with Luis Angel Acuna, you can throw Alex Ramirez in there as well. This is my baseline offer, though. Four for one deal. See what the Yankees have in terms of what they're willing to offer and how far they're willing to go and go from there. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But you can see in red here, Juan Soto's 2024 arbitration values at $27 million. And he does hit free agency, obviously, in 2025. Listen, Mets fans, I understand the Mets have a lot of roster holes to fill. A bat on the market that is the likes of Juan Soto does not come around frequently. To pair Juan Soto with Pete Alonso and Francisco Lindor, that opportunity does not come around frequently. And I firmly believe if you wait to 2025, that option is no longer on the table. And the 2025 free agent class in terms of hitters outside of Juan Soto and Anthony Santander from the Orioles is sparse. So the Mets need to play their cards accordingly this offseason. And I firmly believe that is the reason why they cannot afford to wait around to add that big bat that they desperately need. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know what you think about this trade package. I understand people are going to say this is too much, but I'm not a prospect hugger. You need to be willing to part ways with prospects 
that are question marks themselves until they, they prove themselves. We've seen it with Brett Beatty. We've seen it with a lot of prospects around the league. You need to be willing to part ways with prospects. That's why they did what they did during the 2023 deadline. And it just is what it is. That's my mentality. Let me know what you all think in the comments section. If you'd like to see Juan Soto in orange and blue in Queens, first and foremost, let me know your thoughts and opinions. And two, let me know what your hypothetical trade package is of what the New York Mets would give up for Juan Soto if they are interested in talking with the Padres about Juan Soto. I appreciate everyone tuning in to the True Mets Talk podcast. Like I said, this is your boy CP from the CP New York Sports Podcast Network on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, bottom right-hand corner. Just click on my icon, hover over it, hit that subscribe button. I promise you more Mets content is coming soon. Comment your thoughts and opinions. First and foremost, I want to hear what you all have to think, so make sure to comment. As well as follow me on all my other social medias, X, Instagram, all that good stuff. All my handles are at CPNY Sports. Like I said, this is another episode of the TMT Podcast. Until the next, next episode, let's keep monitoring what the Mets are going to be doing this offseason. The Mets Roundtable Podcast goes live every Monday night if you're looking for more Mets content, more perspectives from other Mets content creators. Mets Roundtable, Hot Stove Edition is going live every Monday night. We just went live yesterday, so go check that out as well. As always, I'll see you all on the next podcast episode. See you all later. Thank you for watching the latest episode of the CP New York Sports Pod. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that thumbs up, comment your thoughts and opinions, and use the lower right-hand button of this video to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.